Hello, my name is Faisal Khan. I'm a banking and a payment consultant. The video I want to do today is to make you understand how you can start a pseudo bank or a neo bank, if you will, from the EU and provide access to wallets and cards and basically an IBAN to all your customers. In the EU, you have a concept known as an EMI, an electronic money institution. An electronic money institution basically is a stored value e-money supplier. It uh, sits on top of a bank. It is allowed to issue IBANs and, with, and on those virtual IBANs, your customers can be assigned to them and they can get a balance. Uh, typically, an EMI interfaces, you know, depending on where you get it in Europe, it interfaces with the faster payments in the UK, sometimes even the banks, and also, as well as the SEPA in the EU. So you can offer Euro IBANs and GPB IBANs to your customers. These are virtual, they all are under your uh, EMI license. And you know, many EMIs now also offer a card scheme. So that means you can issue debit cards to your customers so that when they go, they can actually use that balance. Why this is interesting is a lot of people around the world, especially, are trying to make wallets or mediums of exchange for their you know, customers and they need a centralized location to do so. If you want to start something, let's say in Kenya, Kenya might not really be the best place to do an e-money license where people from world over may sign up for. Uh, the United States is great, but the US doesn't allow external sign-ups for customers to have virtual you know, IBANs or DDA accounts from outside the US. So the EU is very nicely positioned for something like this. I, I will have to say some EMIs allow only EU or UK residents to get such an IBAN facility and some don't. Lithuania, Hungary, Poland, uh, Greece, some uh, parts in France and Spain, these are EMIs that allow international clients to come in. In UK, it's 50-50. Some of them just want UK EU residents and some will take clients from everywhere in the world. So if you want to start a wallet service, you could be based out of China or Hong Kong or India or Pakistan or Nigeria, etc. You could be having it for a vertical field for freelancers, for the travel industry, for B2B businesses, what have you you can actually get a sponsorship deal done with an EMI where you become an EMD, an electronic money distributor with them. And by doing so, you can issue IBANs, you can take custody of funds, and you can do many other things. You're basically an agent of that EMI. Um, one of the most fantastic things you can do is you can issue IBANs for all your customers. If you're in the B2B space or in a very particular space where you have cross-border uh, you know, border settlements, you can offer settlement facilities to them. The users can benefit because I could be sitting as a business or an individual in China or in you know, Bangladesh, what have you, and I'd have access to a Euro IBAN and a, Euro, you know, a, a GPB IBAN. What this means for me is for a person sitting outside the Eurozone that I can accept payments natively as if I were sitting inside the Eurozone. You can compete in the Eurozone and in the world for freelancing businesses and so forth, but when it comes to payments, you really can't compete so. And in this case, you, do, you can because it allows you to operate no differently than any other company or individual within, within the Eurozone. And that's a huge advantage. Uh, some of the uh, more, let's say, strict EMIs do not allow businesses to get an account in the, uh, in the Eurozone uh, or in the UK for this thing, and for which you can register a company. You can register a company in the UK, the Netherlands, Estonia, uh, Lithuania, Poland, Spain, and you know, charges vary. There are very, very little charges. In, in, in the UK, I believe you can spend something like 70 or 80 pounds and you can get a company the next day. So. If you have a UK company, boom, you can suddenly get a UK GBP account and you can do transactions on it. A lot of people are now looking at these wallet type services from countries in Latin America, from Venezuela, Argentina, Brazil, Chile. Venezuela may be difficult because it is a, let's say, a high risk sanctioned country. Uh, Argentina may be slightly difficult, but you know, if you want your citizens in, let's say, in Brazil to have access to an international wallet, have access to an international IBAN scheming system, 
you can be a sponsor you can become an agent you can sign up from them and then does that same wallet can be extended with you know to other countries can be extended to australia new zealand can be extended to southeast asia or the gcc it's a in this case i think the the european union emi program is perhaps one of the best in the world i cannot think of in another program that rivals it even comes close to it the 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 eu and uk have literally figured it out and have really hammered it well and then a whole industry has spawned right outside of it which is you know issuance of debit cards giving you merchant acquiring services giving you company registration services giving you loan and credit services all based on that sort of so called emi service and you can use those apis you can use those i frames and those white label guidelines to literally build your own neo bank and what does that basically mean i'm going to do a separate video on what a neo bank really means and what it means to build one but basically you could use an api you can give a, an excellent ui ux and the users will flock to you because of the either the vertical you may be operating in or the country domain or country domains you may be operating in and it offers an ease of service to receive payments and send payments and it's basically a bank because you can receive payments and you can send payments you can send payments within the sepa zone and you can send them outside the sepa zone using swift so this is a basic understanding of what an emi and an emd relationship is if it is something that you are looking at if it is something that you would like to start up with maybe you want to start a money transfer service based on a wallet service maybe you want to start a freelancing payment service based on a wallet service it is always a wallet service because the iban being issued to you is a wallet so it's not a straight through processing albeit that's one of the functionalities of an emi you can definitely do that but it it is targeted and geared more towards people who are looking at uh restricting or or uh, focusing their efforts on stored value uh most of the emis will not touch crypto i think crypto is going through a very difficult time i'm going to do another video on that and why that is happening but typically uh if you are looking at starting a stored value e wallet service if worldwide or within the eu uk i think the emi program is something you should look at Uh, we have a lot of information on our website to do so. If you want to learn how to uh, become an EMI agent or get a quote for it, the pricing is our, is all is already on our website, and I'll include a link to the form below where you can inquire about becoming an EMD uh, for an EMI agent. If you have any other questions or comments, as always, there is a contact form in the description below. Please fill it out. I'll be happy to answer your question. Till next time, signing out.